Thank you very much for the introduction. I think you presented me uh, much better than I could do it myself. Um, you also presented uh, the IEA PVPS program, uh, which is one of the, as you mentioned, one of the research programs focusing on renewable energy within the International Energy Agency. So I won't tell much more about that. Uh, you could find more information on the, um, on the IEA PVPS website, uh, and I will mention the URL at the end of this presentation. So I would like to start with something that is, uh, in my opinion, quite amazing to better understand uh, what PV represents today. And this number is a simple number, it's five. And five, it's the number of PV panels that are installed in the world, not every day, not every hour, not every minute, but every second. And so in the 15 minutes that this presentation will take, roughly, we will install one megawatt of PV system all over the world. And this is the consequence of the incredible growth that the PV market has experienced in the last 10 years. And as I'm saying very often, someone who would have uh, spent 10 years on a remote island wouldn't recognize the PV market. 10 years ago in 2005, a bit more than one gigawatt was installed every year. And as Fernando Nuno mentioned before, indeed the market has been multiplied by 40. And by 40 in 10 years, this is something that we haven't seen in many industrial sectors um, in the last year. What is extremely interesting is to look at how the market is globalized for the time being. We have a large part of the market that is located in Asia, probably something around 50% of the market, mainly in China, but also in Japan, in Korea, in Australia, uh, in Thailand, in Taiwan, and in many other countries. But we also have a significant market in the US, in Canada. We have a market that starts in a certain number of Latin American countries, starting with Chile. Uh, we have a market in Europe for years. Europe used to lead the development of the PV sector um, until 2012. Um, and we have markets that is uh, emerging in a certain number of countries all over the world in Africa, in the Middle East, and in all the places I haven't mentioned until now. So if we're looking at how much it represents in terms of installed capacity, we have 177 or 177,000 megawatts that were installed at the end of 2014. This is something quite important that can hardly be compared with something else. So I prefer to jump immediately to a picture that represents the evolution of the very fast evolution of this installed capacity. And as I was mentioning a few minutes ago, if we are just going back 10 years in the past, 10 years we were almost nowhere. We had something like 5 gigawatt installed all over the world. Now we have 177. And a large part of it has been installed in Europe, actually. Uh, roughly half of the total installed capacity for the time being has been installed in Europe. We can see that the Asia-Pacific region, thanks to China and Japan mainly, is progressing quite fast and without any doubt will become the first region in terms of total PV installed capacity in the coming years. The Americas, North, Latin uh, and the Caribbean region is progressing fast but not at the same speed. And the only region of the world where PV is starting to develop, but hasn't really developed yet, is the region of the Middle East and Africa, North and South. If we're looking at the countries that have contributed a lot to the growth of the PV market in 2014, we can see at the first place China that installed more than 10 gigawatts alone, so a bit more than 25% of the total market, followed by Japan, the US, and then a certain number of European countries, the UK, where the development uh, is going quite fast, Germany, that used to be the market leader, and that's still installed a bit less than two gigawatts, but also France. And behind that, we see countries uh, in different places of the world where the market is developing for some years already, or where the market is starting to develop. And I'm thinking about South Africa, which is the very first country in Africa to um, have reached now almost one gigawatt. Then we have India, where the potential is tremendous, but where the market is uh, developing at a slower pace, despite the very, very uh, ambitious, ambitious announcement from the government that targets now 100 gigawatts of installed capacity in 2022. 
And if we're looking at the top 10 countries in terms of cumulative capacity, it says a lot about which are the countries that have powered the PV development until now. And so we still have Germany, which is the first country in the world in terms of total PV installed capacity with 38 gigawatts. And Germany will reach close to 40 gigawatts this year, followed by China, that without uh, little doubt is going to become the first country also in terms of installed capacity. And then we have a certain number of European countries and even small, smaller countries like Belgium, which is the 10th in the list, with 3.1 gigawatts installed until now. Something interesting to notice is Spain. Spain installed five, a bit more than 5 gigawatts of PV systems, but mainly in two years. So it was installed mainly in 2007, 2008, and uh, a little bit in the years afterwards. But for the time being, the market has completely stopped in Spain because of political decisions um, not favoring the development of solar in general and PV in particular. Now it's interesting to discuss about gigawatts, but it's much more interesting at a certain moment to see how much it represents in terms of contribution of PV in the electricity demand uh, of a country. And in that respect, we can see that in 20 countries around the world, PV is already producing more than 1% of the electricity demand. And 1%, it's exactly the share of the electricity demand covered by PV in the entire world. But we have a certain number of countries where the penetration is much higher. And we have three iconic countries, Italy, Greece, and Germany, where the PV penetration at the end of 2014 was higher than 7%. 7% of the electricity demand. This is a number that can be even multiplied by two if we look at the PV penetration with regard to the peak power demand. And so we have in Italy close to 16% of the peak power demand that is provided by PV, in Greece more than 15%, and in Germany close to 14%. These are numbers that have been achieved, as I was mentioning in the beginning, very, very fast. And so the big question is, at which speed is the PV market going to develop in the future? This is not something that I will um, develop in this presentation, but given the speed at which it, it has developed until now, we can expect in the future very fast development of PV. Now, if we're looking a bit at the economics of PV, because so far PV developed thanks to financial incentives, but this is changing very fast. And now we have to look at what exactly PV represents. And this is something quite important. It's to distinguish two different very different kind of PV installations with very different economics behind. One is simple producers of electricity. And when we're looking at these very large PV plants installed all over the world, they just aim at producing electricity that is injected into the grid and that is sold either on the market or to electricity companies. These very large PV installations have increased in size in the last years. And the largest one that we can see for the time being uh, exists in China and in the US with more than 500 megawatts in size. 500 megawatts in size, just to give an idea, uh, it's the size of a conventional gas power plant. So with regards to uh, the largest PV installation that you can see for the time being, there are not any more very small PV installations as we used to see in the past, but they are starting to be uh, as large as traditional um, electricity power plants. And on the other side, we have all the world of distributed PV. So small to medium sized installations installed in general on the roof of buildings. And the concept behind is called prosumers. Prosumers, it's just a mix between two words, producer of electricity, because there's a PV system on the roof, um, people are be becoming producers, but also consumers of electricity. And in that case, the electricity that is produced by the PV system is going to compensate first the electricity consumption of a place. And so we'll discuss about self-consumption, concept of energy efficiency. We'll discuss about the concept of grid parity. So can PV produce at a price that is similar the retail price of electricity, and we will discuss about competition with the traditional business of utilities when they are producing and distributing electricity. And what is interesting is that for the time being, this is only one single technology that is used for producers and prosumers. 
if you're looking at the new business models, because I was mentioning that uh, PV was fueled initially, or the development of PV was fueled by financial incentives, the numbers that you can see here date from the end of 2013. They have evolved slightly since then. But basically, it means that the large part of the development of PV until now has been driven by these financial incentives. Um, it can be fill in tariffs, it can be green certificates, but more and more, pure competitive PV is increasing. Uh, it's increasing, especially in countries of the world where PV is starting to develop. Countries that didn't want initially to uh, fuel uh, PV through financial incentives. Uh, and something interesting that we can see is that if we're looking at self-consumption policies, so PV on rooftops for prosumers, more than 50% of these installations in the world were already at least partially driven by non-financial incentives, so net metering or self-consumption regulations. And this is something that we are going to see more and more in the coming years, which also means that the development of PV is not going to be constrained anymore by the ability of electricity customers or governments to finance it, but simply by the natural competitiveness of PV installations. And that natural competitiveness uh, has been driven by declining PV prices. Uh, if we are looking simply again 10 years in the past, we can see that the price has been diminished in such a way that no one could really imagine and that we have prices for PV models that are 10 times lower than what they used to be at the end of the first decade of this millennium. And in terms of PV prices, they are so low that today the most competitive call for tenders, and that's what I'm going to show you in a minute, are so low that basically PV is starting to compete with conventional energy sources and even the cheapest one. But before sh showing you that, I would like to show you that the potential of PV cost decline can be even more important. And this figure has been generated um, by uh, a model that has been developed by Agora Energy Vendor in Germany with uh, the help of a certain number of stakeholders from PV the PV industry. And it shows that already today, with the cheapest PV prices on the market, we could reach in the sunniest regions of the world. And here we have taken the example of some places in North America, in Australia, in India, and in the Middle East and North African countries. The PV could produce around, let's say, 4.5 to 5 euro cents per kilowatt hour. This is, of course, the lowest prices that we can see for the time being, but we expect that these are going to continue diminishing in the coming years, and that before 2050, PV will be able to produce electricity below 2 euro cents per kilowatt hour. But what can we see already for the time being? And this is a compilation that has been done inside the International Energy Agency to um, to identify what was happening in the world. And um, I suggest to look only at um, the red figures, not the blue one. The blue one referred to CSP, so concentrated solar power, which is a totally different technology. But if we look at PV today, we can see that the cheapest PPA, so power purchase agreements, that has been granted in 2014 was 5.84, 5.85 US dollar cents per kilowatt hour. It has been granted to a company called Aqua Power in Dubai. 5.85 US dollar cents per kilowatt hour is so low that the Dubai Energy Authority decided to double the grant from 100 megawatts to 200 megawatts. But this one is extremely uh, low, but a certain number of orders in India, in South Africa, in Brazil, in Chile, in the US, in other countries are showing that in between seven and nine US dollar cents per kilowatt hour, the LCOE, so the cost of PV electricity, uh, is already so low that it can already compete with a certain number of conventional sources of electricity. And that's something extremely unexpected by many that is going to continue in the coming years at a very, very fast pace. Now, and I, before concluding, uh, I would like just to spend one minute explaining a bit how to remunerate PV. And with the increased PV penetration in the electricity mix, financial incentives, as we have seen in the past, so fade-in tariffs and similar schemes, but also tax breaks uh, as they exist in the US, 
will not be feasible anymore. So what's going to happen once the grid parity threshold, so the moment where PV could provide electricity below the retail price of the electricity will happen, it's basically will go to in the direction of self-consumption schemes. Self-consumption means how can I consume the PV electricity in order to compensate my electricity bill. And this is something that exists already in a certain number of countries and that will develop even more in the future. The second thing is about private PPAs. It means a company can decide um, to ask uh, a PV plant to provide electricity during a certain number of years at a predefined price without going through the electricity market. And this is something that we can see already in Chile, for instance, with large industrial players um, having, uh, having signed PPAs with um, PV producers. And then there is a big question that will have to be solved at a certain moment is how to remunerate PV installations based on electricity markets. And this is something that is going to happen at a certain moment. It's, it has already started in a certain number of countries like Germany. It's not done completely, but it's clearly the direction in which PV is going. And the direction is the integration into the electricity markets and in the electricity systems in general. And now, in order to conclude, I would like to summarize. And the future of PV depends, of course, of its competitiveness. And you've seen uh, part of this figure before. The idea is simply that at a certain moment, PV is going to become so cheap that it will compete with almost all, all sources of electricity. And we're approaching that point very fast. But the second question is, if the penetration of PV is increasing, are the electricity markets simply able to accommodate such high shares of PV. And I don't want to go too much in the detail today because it's not the subject, but it's going to be one of the challenges of the future, how to adapt electricity markets that have been conceived for conventional electricity sources in order to remunerate producers of PV and or wind electricity in the best way. That's a very complex challenge that will have to be tackled one way or another. The question of incentives is extremely important, as I was mentioning. So how to ensure PV development and how to accompany it. But something also quite important, and I will be a little bit provocative by putting here a flag of China and a flag of the European Union. It's the question where we would like to produce PV components. And in a certain number of countries for the time being, the question of local content and local production um, is becoming extremely acute and is followed closely by policymakers. So some are saying that basically there will be no development of PV with a lo local production, but I let you conclude yourself on that point. And in order to finish, PV remains a re relatively young technology and something will be extremely important in the coming years is to ensure the reliability of PV systems and especially through a permanent quest for quality looking at the PV performance during the lifetime of the system. And something that is less mentioned, but is, that is as important, and that is linked to almost everything I have mentioned below, it's the cost of financing. Something that is well known in the PV sector, and it's the more you finance your PV system at a high cost, the more expensive your electricity will be. And if you could finance your PV system at a very low cost, then you could produce extremely low um, PV electricity at an extremely low price. And so the question of the cost of financing will be extremely important in the coming years to ensure the competitiveness of PV. And before concluding, if you're looking for more information about the International Energy Agency Photovoltaic Power System Program, you can go directly to the IEA .pvps.org website. A large part of what I've presented today comes from a, from a, from a report called um, the Snapshots of uh, PV Markets 2014 that you can download. We have a certain number of other reports focusing on almost all points that I've mentioned today. I thank you for your attention. I would be pleased to see your questions being written. Thank you very much.